وصلى الله على النبي الكريم محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين property is totally on the disposal of the owner can do with it whatever is permissible in sharia so he can sell it he can gift it he can spend it yes but he cannot play gambling with because that is not permissible in sharia he cannot destroy it for example he brought a bunch of dollars and put it on fire that is not permissible in sharia that is haram got it he cannot take a plea my property on my disposal yes but as a muslim you are bound to certain other rules as well got it or not it got it or not it yes you should write it that he cannot play gambling with he cannot destroy it for no reason taking a plea that this is my property and as i mentioned he can sell it he can gift it he can spend it he can gift it to whom to whomsoever he wants you should write it but again if that is permissible in sharia so no muslim can gift a property for making a church or a hindu temple or a wine bar or a gambling den you know what i'm saying or a winery got it he can gift it to a human being or for any welfare good of humans or good of the creature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but this is the important point but when somebody falls sick with the such a sickness which most probably causing death which most probably causing death and practically caused it practically caused it such like sickness is called maradul maut what death sickness what death sickness so there are two conditions what we mention for him ha huh? no not there in the previous sentence 
we mentioned two conditions of being a sickness, a death a sickness. Number one, such a sickness which causes death most probably. And number two, it caused it practically later on. Because sometimes some sickness causing death, but in certain cases it did not cause it. You know what I am saying? Got it or not? Like, things like that happened. Yes, the doctor said. No. He cannot live long for more than one month. And suddenly miracle happens. Yes or not? Both kidneys failed. A young man from Nandikotan. And his father is a big malak. So he was there in connection to Khatma Quran. After my speech he came to me, I have this only one son. His both kidneys got failed. So he's a guest for two days, three days, month, two months, something like that. So can you please make a dua because I believe strongly in dua. I told him this is Ramadan. Because that was the third night of Ramadan, I went there for three nights khatam. Yes. Giving lectures after every four rakat. Got it? Got it or not? So I told him that this is Ramadan if you can. So just have your Umrah visa for yourself and for him. And take him to Baitullah and Ramadan. Do ibadah. And if he doesn't want to eat, so don't push him for eating. Just give him zamzam. Zamzam. Day and night. Zamzam, zamzam, zamzam. Yes, he stayed there for whole Ramadan and even the month of Shawwal. And when he came back, he took his, his son to doctors. And doctor said, that 70% it recovered. Got it or not it? So miracle happens. Or does not? Yes or not? Yes. Faruk sahab, happens or not? Your case is? Faruk sahab is a, is a miracle. Yes. Alhamdulillah, he is okay. More healthy than me. Yes. And this is the barak of tafsir. Yes? You do feel it. Yes. So anyhow, that's why I mentioned two conditions. Number one, the sickness causes death most probably. And number two, it caused it practically later on. The guy died. So in such like sickness, if he has done any transaction, so what will be the case of that transaction? You should write it. If he has done any transaction, like sold some property to someone, or gifted some property to someone, you should write it. He sold some property to someone, or... So number one, in this sickness according to Abu Hanifa, one other condition is there. That he remained sick for less than one year. You should write it. According to Abu Hanifa. There is no limit according to other three imams. But only those two conditions. Number one, causing death. Number two, caused it. Doesn't matter for how long he was sick. But Abu Hanifa says, if he was sick for more than one year, we cannot put restriction on a guy not to do any transaction for ten years. Does it make sense? Once again, he is a guy. He is or not? What a, what a beautiful approach. He said if he is on his bed for more than one year, what you will say? Sell his transactions are hanging. Got it? But anyhow, if the sickness is defined as maradul mouth or death sickness, yes? So what about his transactions? Any transactions which he has done, any transaction, which he has done for his needs and necessities, these are okay. You cannot put any restriction to that transaction. He is in need of food, in need of drink, in need of 
dress, in need of medicine, in need of treatment. So can we put a restriction on that? That's number one. Number two, any other transaction which he has done, but he got paid the market price. What? The market price. Not more or less than that. So you cannot blame him. Yes? Because in exchange he got something. That's in his ownership. He sold one acre zameen in Kalyas when he was sick. He sold one acre zameen in Kalyas. What's the rate of one acre nowadays? Did you buy anything else? Land <laughs> So like 800,000 rupees, one acre in that village. So if somebody sold it for 700,000 or 650,000, that's okay. That's almost market value. Yes, such like cases are taking place. But if he sold one acre of the mean to someone for 200,000, so that's called Muhabat. That's called what? Muhabat. Muhabat means doing favor to someone. Doing favor to someone because of relation or because of friendship or something else. He could be blamed for. He could be what? Blamed for that. Baba, oh, you did him a favor. An acre of 800,000, you have given it to such and such person, your cousin for 200,000. You know what I'm saying? So it's called what? Muhaba. So such like transaction could be challenged. Sharia is very practical. Yes. In the court of law, we are talking, we are talking about Islamic Sharia. Yes. So we are talking about Islamic State. We are not talking about America or Pakistan. Yes. Because we are not in Pakistan, in class. We are in Sharia law. <laughs> Who? Oh. Yes, sir, you can you can challenge it, yes. Because either the guy concerned, he will pay the proper money for their property. Who bought it? Or he will return it and he will take back his two hundred thousand. Got it? Because the person who died, he was in Maradul mouth. So now you should you should write a note so you will come to know very easily. That in Maradul mouth the ownership of the person concerned becomes very weak. That is not a perfect ownership. That is a conditional. That is what? Conditional. conditional ownership. Because now he is going to die. Now he is going. And he knows that my property will go to other people. My property will go to other pe people. So that is why he is trying to do favor to some people. Before his death. You know what I am saying? Got it? God is or not it? And if he has gifted, you should write, if he has gifted something to someone or to an institution, in such a situation, when he was a sick of Maradul mouth, when he was sick of Maradul mouth. Then that transaction would be dealt or would be treated as a will. As what? As a will. So it means that is legal to the extract of one third of his property. You should write it. If that is less than one third of his property, that is done. Because up to one third, he can what? He can make a bill. But one third after what? After two things. 
Number one, very expensive, his debts. In a one third, in the remaining property after burial expenses and after payment of debts. Got it? And in more than one third of his remaining property, that is subject to the approval of his heirs. That is subject to the approval of his heirs. Now look. His whole property was uh, for twelve thousand dollars. Yes, one thousand burial expenses gone. Three thousand his debts paid. So four thousand are gone. Now how much remain? Eight thousand. He had gifted in Maradul Maut. Such a thing or such an amount which is more than one third of eight thousand. What will be one third of eight thousand? <laughs> huh? No, not three thousand. Huh? Oh yes. Rich people can calculate. Yes. Yeah, more recently he came back from rich country. What do you think? Sabraha? It means that big transactions took place, <laughs> but we don't know. Maybe Ajayani knows, but he does not tell us. Ajayani, yes, transactions have taken place in hundreds of thousands. How should he even calculation? Yes, tell us the amount. <laughs> because you had been the, sitting there in Arg. Sivla Khan, they don't know it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now look, whatever he had gifted in Maradul Maut, so that was for example of three thousand dollar. So up to two thousand six hundred sixty six, his will or gift is okay. Yes. But in the remaining 334, his gift or will is subject to the approval of his heirs. Because that's the due right of his heirs. That's what the right of? His heirs. God or not it? God or not it? Yes. So as you remember that we started with the Taraka or left behind property of a deceased one. That first of all, Yubdo Bitakfini Hi Wataj Hizhi. From his property, the burial expenses to the extent of Sharia. Burial expenses? But to the extent of Sharia. So now, slaughter of a bull or cow. And cooking of 20 days of rice in Muhammad area in your tribe. Yes? And the expenses of Rasmi Fatiha of Afghani people and the expenses, that is not Sharia. So it could not be paid from his property. You know what I am saying? That's why we said to the extent of Sharia, because certain Rusum are there in different cultures. When somebody dies and passes away, there are certain rusums are there, customs are there, which has nothing to do with Sharia. And if we are doing any rasam or any custom with the intention of sawab, and it does not have any root in Sharia, that's called bid'ah. That's called what? Bid'ah. Bid'ah bid is a custom. Bid'ah is what? Is a custom or innovation, which does not have any root and source in Sharia. 
and we are doing the same with the intention of sawab. So instead of sawab, we are earning azab. Instead of sawab, we are earning azab. Yes. <laughs> that Mujaddidi sahab, who is in Irvine, he sent me a message. That what a beautiful step you have taken. That this bit I am talking a lot about. Yes. So anyhow, burial expenses according to, or to the extent of, number two, payment of debts. That is the second due responsibility. And number three, execution of will. Uh, to the extent of one third, not Sharia, to the extent of one third of his remaining property. And now number four, distribution. To his heirs, according to Quran, Sunnah and Ijma, because chaos does not work here. Chaos doesn't work in arithmetic or in eligibility. You should write it in note that chaos doesn't work. In eligibility, and number two, in arithmetics. And law of inheritance is arithmetics. <laughs> so it may be distributed according to Quran, Sunnah, Sunnah and Ijma. Now, the science of inheritance is defined as, you should write it, the knowledge of the rules of fiqh, the knowledge of the rules of fiqh and arithmetics through which the due right of every deserving person is known. The due right of not every person. And arithmetics. Because there are two things. Number one, the rules. Number two, you must know the arithmetics. If you don't know the mathematics, so you can never become a proper scholar of law of inheritance. And that's what I told you, that in Pakistan, for example, every year, more than 30, 40,000 people are becoming graduates of madrasas. We call them alim. But only one per thousand, or even less than that, they know law of inheritance. You know what I'm saying? And law of inheritance, that is actually the miracle of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I told you, that in Britain, one guy, he wrote a book on law of inheritance in Islam. And he accepted Islam. He said, for the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is more than enough. Because this arithmetic is not known to anybody. This arithmetic is not known to anybody. That is known to Allah only. Got it? So that's why. That uh, Islamic science of inheritance is the knowledge of uh, huh, rules of fiqh and arithmetics through which the due right of every deserving person is known. So now, when we defined the science of inheritance with such words, so it includes the payment of debts and the execution of will as well. The payment of debts and number, hmm, execution of Now the hairs they are of few categories. 
नंबर वन दे आर कॉल्ड जविल फोरूज जविल फोरूज इन इंग्लिश वी कॉल देम से शेयरर्स दे आर दो हेयर्स हुज डू शेयर एन तरका तरका इज दी लेफ्ट बिहाइंड is mentioned in Quran Sunnah or through Ijma of Sahaba so then inshallah Monday we will start with the relevant ayat with brief summary then we will go to second category of hairs then we will go ahead to third category of hairs the second category is called hasaba or residue the third category is called zawlar ham or far kindred or extended family because of somebody does not have zawil furus nor he has hasaba so what we will do with the property it will go to his extended family and there are four categories then got it that who are the first eligible yes if they are not there so then it will go to maula al ataka when slavery was there and somebody got free by his owner and that slave who got free he passed away and he does not have neither zawal furus nor hasaba nor zawal arham so his master or his heirs they will take the property because he owned it because of their freedom he owned it because of if he would not have set him free so he would not have any single penny is in ownership got it that's called maulal ataka yes if uh, he is not there then there is another thing which is called the maul al mawalat maul al mawalat that's only according to abu hanifa that if two people were living somewhere and both of them were mujarrad mujarrad mean having no aga picha huh. no one in front no one in the back yes both of them were like this yes so they did a pledge to each other or a contract that taqil hanni wa aqil hank wa taris hanni wa aris hank yes that you will pay from my side if i owe something i will pay from your side if you owe to someone something yes you will inherit me and i will inherit you so that is called maul al mawalat that's called wal ladina aqadat aymanukum fa atuhum nasibahum abu hanifa rahimahullah He referred, according to others, that is uh, abrogated. According to Abu Hanifa, I am still in power or in force. Got it? If mawal mawal al mawalat is not there, then al mukarlahu bin nasabi al al ghair. Who? Al mukarlahu bin nasabi al al ghair. Mukarlahu bin nasabi al al ghair mean that somebody he admitted that this guy is my brother. If I will say that this guy is my son, so he is also mukarrahu. I admitted him as my son, but I am putting responsibility on my shoulder, not on the shoulder of anybody else. 
You know what I am saying? But if I say that he is my brother, so as I put a responsibility on my shoulder, I put the same on the shoulder of my father as well. You know what I am saying? God is someone your brother, it means that he is the son of your father. God is not it. If I will say that he is my uh, 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 mean paternal uncle, what? Paternal uncle. Yes. So I am putting a little responsibility on my shoulder, but I am putting a big responsibility on the shoulder of my grandfather. That is the son of my grandfather. Got it? So that's called Mukarlahu bin Nasabi al Ghair. If no one of such like uh, inheritors are alive there, and only that Mukarlahu is there, so he will take the property of that one on whose shoulder because of my admission the responsibility came. Got it or not? It? If he is not there, then Al Musa lahu bi jami al mal. That the guy made a will of his entire property 100%. So we said that whatever will a person made, it would be implemented and executed to the extent of one third. To the extent of one third. And more than one third, that's null and void. But if the hair is allowed, okay, we allow that. Our father made that will. Even though that's more than one third of his property, or more than half of his property, but he did it, yes, just do it. If they say no, so it would be executed only to the extent of one third, and two third will go to the sons and daughters or whatever the case may be. So if nobody is there like this, and he had made a wasiya or will in favor of someone of 100% of his property, so now the whole property will go to that uh, uh, beneficiary. It will go to that beneficiary. If no beneficiary is there and nobody else is there, so then, according to Ayyama, Rahimahullah, Summa Yota Amwadu Huli Baitil Mal, it will go to the National Exchequer. Then it will go there? To the National Exchequer. So it will take time when you will have the details. Farooq Sahib, what do you think? Do you like the science of inheritance? Huh? No, it will become very easy. Yes? You are account, you are CPA, you are accountant. Kamar Zama, he knows that. Yes, the only thing is, we will give you rules and then we will ask you, just go and distribute it properly. Yes, and if you both will not do that, I will ask you that, give your certificate to me then. <laughs> yes? Anyhow, Bismillah. Hayat <laughs> Raghulayne. China single. Well, Munger Tabs, intelligence like all of us, huh? Ah, the Homer Han Noy.